as God speaks through his prophets to the people of Israel. Shout out! Do not hold back. Amen. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I chose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day of acceptance to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To boost the bonds of injustice, to undo the thrones of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and all your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. so much and you're starting to lose weight, that all kind of goes along with losing weight, right? You start feeling better and you start, start, start going better. Now over in Hollywood, you know, I was watching Dr. Oz the other day. <laughs> watching Dr. Oz. And anyway, I was watching, he was talking about these Hollywood fad diets. And this is not so much a fad diet, but it's a lifestyle change when it comes to how you eat. It's called a 16-8 fast. 
For 16 hours a day, you don't eat anything. Okay? Sit back. Well, that's not bad. You got eight hours, you can. Okay? Depends on when you start. Now, if you start eating at 7 o'clock in the morning, oh, I'm blowing off the work, start eating at 7 o'clock in the morning, by 3 o'clock, you're done eating. Yeah, not so good, right? You want to be able to have supper and things like that. But what he's saying was, push your eating. What breakfast is, breakfast is break fast. All right, break your fast. You slept all night and you were fasting all night and then you wake up and you break your fast. So, when do you break your fast? Let's say you break it later. Let's say you break it around 11 o'clock. Have a brunch. All right? And then eat reasonably. That's important. Don't, you can't, you know, hey, I'm going to have two pies and a, and a, a milkshake for all day. You know, that's not, that's not good for you. But if you eat reasonably in those eight hours, and then at 7 o'clock in the evening, you stop eating, and then you start your fasting. Okay? And it is shown that all these well-buffed, you know, Hollywood people, that's what they've been doing. That is the diet that they've been, that, that most of them have been on. You can't do that um, Joaquin Phoenix diet either. He, he ate, when he was doing the Joker, he ate an apple a day. How in the world can you live off of that? But that's what he was living off, an apple a day. He looked it too. He looked pretty, he looked pretty rough. So, anyway, if you're going to take a fast physics for your physical well-being, talk to your doctor first. Don't take the advice of the preacher. Take, you know, go, you know, you take my advice on some things, you know, spiritual stuff like that, you know, when it comes to dieting, go talk to your doctor. Uh, make sure you're okay to do that. Now, these physical fasts that people do, for physical benefit is one thing, but what we want to talk about this morning is the fast that we are doing for Lent. Why do we fast at Lent? The fast that we do at Lent is for a spiritual growth. Like all the disciplines, there's all types of disciplines. You fasting, uh, giving of alms, uh, reading scriptures, coming to worship, meditation and prayer, all that is all that is our disciplines that lead to lead to an awakening of God's grace in your life. Okay? So when we take our fast, when we do a fast during the time of Lent, throughout these 40 days, it is to awaken us. It is to awaken our spirits to be with God's spirit. And the, our, our need for God's spirit. And to remember, sometimes when you take your fast, okay, when you're in a fast, sometimes you slip up, okay, oh, you bit in some chocolate that you said you was giving up for Lent. But you want to know something? That's to remind you also that you are in constant need of redemption. Okay, so when you fail, God's okay. He still loves you. You're still redeemable. So even if you haven't started a fast yet, now, you know, you can still jump in. God, God's going to... Because the reason that we do this is that we're looking for a righteous outcome with God. Okay? We're looking for some sort of righteous outcome of this. In this chapter in Isaiah, God has a critique on the way they're fasting. They may not be eating but they're not changing spiritually either. They're not changing and doing what God wants them to be doing. He, he sees the hypocrisy. He says, announce to the house of Jacob their sins. They act as if they're a nation that's practicing righteousness and have not forsaken the ordinance of God. God is asking us that when we take a fast to seek his righteousness. However, they say, don't you see, God? We're fasting. Don't you see how we're acting? Don't you see how we are? We're hungry. And yet God says, you're 
your rumblings of your stomach are empty amens. Because you're not doing it for the right reasons. They're being hy hypocrites. Remember what Jesus said that we should be doing when we're fasting? Right? He says, don't go on. Oh, no, no. I gave up pizza. You know, come on. Right? Nobody cares. Jesus says, don't be doing that. You, you, you get your reward. People go, oh, so so fasting. You know. You want him to know. You want God. And you would grow. Wash your face. Put on your clothes. Put a smile on your face. Let this be, to be between you and God. Let your fast, let the things that you do be done in secrecy. Something between you and God. Jesus goes out, he, he goes out for 40 days. Now there's a lot of reasons people fast. Right? People fast, sometimes they fast for grief. Some people fast because they're trying to repent from their sins. Some people fast because they're looking for some sort of deliverance off of God. Jesus went out and he fasted for 40 days, as, as Myron read to us this morning. He went out and he fasted for 40 days. And during that period of time, the devil tempted him. Now I want to remind you of something. The devil was not tempting Jesus just three times. Okay? Throughout those whole 40 days, the devil was always in his ear. Go ahead, turn the stone. Turn that stone to bread. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm, you don't have to be hungry. Go ahead, turn, turn that stone to bread. You can do that. I know you can do that. Hey, 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 you want people, you want people to notice you. Just jump off, jump off. The, the, the angels will catch you. Don't worry about it. Go ahead, jump off. Make a big splash. Everybody will see you. Go ahead, be a part of the world. My world. Go ahead. I'll give you all the blessings you need. They'll come from me. That was going on the whole time. But what was Jesus seeking? Jesus sought comfort and a closeness with his Father through the Scriptures. Through Deuteronomy. That's how we rebuke the devil. We rebuke the devil with God's Word. With Scripture. But what Jesus was trying to do during that, why he did a 40-day fast, is that he was attempting to make sure that he had the proper guidance that he was going to need for this ministry that he was about to undertake when he left that desert. He was going to take a ministry of God's message of good news Amen. all the way to the cross of Calvary. Yes. And he was on. And he was after that. So, good thing I wasn't preaching off this page. I lost my book. Okay. <laughs> so what kind of fast is God calling for from us? In Isaiah, God calls out, he says, this is the fast that I choose. Loose the bonds of injustice, undo the thongs and the yokes of the oppressed, that, but, so they can go free, and to, to break all the yokes, to share your bread with the hungry, to take in those who are homeless, clothe those who are naked. Don't hide yourself away from the community. See, people, God doesn't want that either. He doesn't want us to just, oh, we're being blessed and then hide away like some monk up in the, in the mountains. He wants us to be together. He wants us to share together. You know, everybody's all worried about this coronavirus that's going on. Okay? It's something to, be, something to be concerned about. I'm not saying it's not a concern. But we can't hide from one another either. God wants us to be in communion, community and to continue to reach out and care for one another. We'll find a way to do that and still be safe. Remember, we've got corral. Use a lot of corral. Right? But grow close to God in your fast. That's what a fast is for. That's what a spiritual fast is for. When you give up something, that's great. As long as you're giving it up for the right not If you're just looking to lose a few pounds, eh, that's not a reason to go fasting. 
during the time of Lent. What you need to be doing is saying, I'm giving this stuff up, but each time that I go hungry or I, I go missing something, I draw closer to God. I find a way to draw closer to God. I gave up pork, by the way. That's what I did. I gave up pork. I did that on Wednesday, Thursday, 55 and over, pork sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> There's the temptation right off the bat. <laughs> Did all right though, stuck with it. <laughs> but it's not just an absence of food, but it's the sharing of food with those who don't have. It. It's just not, it's just not uh, seeking God in your own life, but it's also seeking to share God's love for others. It is letting God grow in you and steer your life to helping others to come and know Christ as well. This season of Lent is a time of repentance. And, and repentance is just basically changing our sinful ways. And to try to our best to walk in righteousness with God. That's what we're being called to do. That's what we're being asked to do. That's what a fast is all about. And in fact, during this time of Lent, it, it's not always just about giving something up for a fast. But it's... But it's it's getting into the Word of God. And it's coming and worshiping. It's giving your full time. And trusting that God will take care of tomorrow. It's, it's loving one another. As Christ has loved us. And sharing the fortunes and the goodness of what God gives to us with others. And leaning upon God during this, during this time to show us the way to live our lives. And to be free. To be free of the yokes that bind us down. That's what a fast can do. That's what a spiritual fast can do. A spiritual fast can set us, our feet, on a road to freedom. Recognizing the grace of God that has been given to us. I want to thank God this morning for all that He does give us. And I hope that as you go on upon your Lenten journey, that you will find a closeness with God. So that when we come to that Easter morning celebration, and we all are, are praising God for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we remember the fast that we've gone through, and that God will walk with us even past Easter morning. Always with us. <coughs> Whatever it is. In his holy name we pray.